Hello everyone, this is Paul Bertarelli reporting for AvWeb and Aviation Consumer from Showalter Aviation at Orlando, Florida. I'm with uh, Preston McClay uh, of Eclipse. Uh, in a previous video, we looked at the uh, Total Eclipse 500, uh, which is a remanufactured version of the original Eclipse, and now we're in that actual airplane. We're going to take a test flight in it. Preston, I'm an experienced piston pilot, not an experienced jet pilot. What should I expect? Uh, specifically in this airplane, I'd encourage you to uh, use the trim. Don't be afraid to use trim. Uh, it's a lot heavier on the controls than most people think. Um, so use the trim to help relieve some of that pressure. And uh, with this initial altitude that we have, uh, it's going to come pretty quick. So uh, just be looking to level off uh, and bring the power back. Because that's going to happen a lot. So we've already talked about this is a completely automated airplane, so I'm going to let you run the automation. But the trick to flying it is to know that automation and fly it that way, correct? Correct. Okay, all right, let's take, let's take a, a flight in this thing. Sounds great. Here we go. When Eclipse says the 500 is an automated and integrated airplane, they're not kidding. Everything in this aircraft revolves around the Avio avionics suite. If you can make that play, the rest of piloting an Eclipse is like driving a Cessna 182. Note how much knob time Preston is spending to set up our brief flight. Even the engine start is automatic. Just switch them on and watch the turns and temperatures come up. With 1,800 pounds of total thrust, the Eclipse has generous power, but not so much that you can't keep up with it. Rotation comes at about 85 knots or so, and then the Eclipse kind of surges into a bottle rocket climb. Even though Preston warned me about that, I busted the initial altitude by a couple of hundred feet. You really have to haul back on the throttles to arrest the climb. En route, we were climbing at about 1,200 feet per minute at about 200 knots indicated. You can figure on about 35 minutes to reach the mid-30s, which is a sweet spot cruise altitude for the Eclipse. We're in the cockpit of the 550 here. We've been flying around. Uh, we're in descent back to Orlando, very busy airspace. Uh, you warned me when we took off that uh, you really got to stay ahead of the pitch in this airplane, otherwise you're going to get altitude excursions, and I did. Uh, so, really, we got to fly this airplane on the autopilot. It flies really well in the autopilot. It's, uh, it definitely reduces the workload. It's a great autopilot, and um, it certainly it certainly helps when you're in busy airspace like this. And they gave us a 1,500 feet initial, which which happens pretty quick. Now, um, so really, the, the 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 intense part of the training on this is the avio system because the airplane itself is relatively easy to fly. This airplane is extremely easy to fly. Um, prior to this, I was flying a Cirrus. And I transitioned right into this airplane. Had a few hours with the mentor, um, but I would say this airplane um, is just as easy to fly as the Cirrus. Believe it or not, as far as the Avio system, it's really just learning the buttonology and, and where everything's at and and, uh, and how to program the system. Just buttonology. Um, but uh, it's it's very easy uh, once you get that figured out. Uh, it becomes pretty simple. Out of out and of we're coming up on our fix here. Right here. Delta, right on time. Big letter left. And how long uh, typically does it take a pilot to learn the Avio system so he'll be comfortable in the airplane? Uh, it just depends on what your background is as far as uh, glass cockpits and digital cockpit environments. Um, it helped me a lot in the beginning to, to come out to the airplane, put power on it, and just kind of push buttons and, and work my way through the system that way. Um, so the more of that you can do, the better. But um, it's really pretty simple once you figure out, it, it's intuitive, and once you figure out the buttonology, um, the learning curve is pretty quick. Talk a little bit about performance uh, turn right heading of, uh, with the new uh, uh, engine burner cans. This airplane is capable of 41,000 feet. 41,000. What kind of speed, what kind of range at that altitude? Uh, the range certainly increases. We decrease a little bit of the speed up there. Uh, this airplane really performs best. 35 to 37,000 feet is where you get your best performance. Um, I like having that capability to go to 41. Uh, for for range and to get over weather uh, if I need to. Um, so uh, at 35,000 feet, you're going to get about 370 true. You're going to burn about 400 pounds an hour total, so that's 200 per engine. Um, and up at 41, you get less of a fuel burn. You'll, you'll lose a little bit of true airspeed. Um, but like I said, it really helps for the range if you need it. And so that's about three and a half hours of endurance? Three and a half hours plus reserves. Yeah, so now we're uh, approaching Orlando. What should I expect on the landing sequence? Uh, this airplane has trailing link landing gear. 
uh, which is really nice. It makes it almost hard to do a bad landing and it. it's very forgiving. Um, so, uh, and the approach speeds are, are really reasonable. The, uh, our rest speed today, let's see what it is. It's, um, at this weight, we're at 92. So we're going to fly the approach at, uh, ref and 10, so 102. And at, at, uh, as we approach the fence, we'll slow down and, and uh, touch down around 92. Okay. So, um, it, it flies really well slow. Uh, you'll notice the hand flying is a little bit easier with the less airspeed over the flight controls. Um, but landing this airplane, uh, it, it, it really makes you look good. Okay, well, we'll see if I can make myself look good on this landing. We'll look at the landing next. Right. Preston told me the Eclipse lands like a Cirrus, and it sure enough does. After a 102 knot final and 90 knots over the fence, a relatively flat touchdown, just like an SR-22, greases it right on. With its new anti-lock brakes, the airplane will stop from touchdown speed in under a thousand feet. For a general overview of the total eclipse, see avweb.com for more and watch for a full review in the April 2013 issue of Aviation Consumer. For Aviation Consumer and Avweb, I'm Paul Bertarelli reporting. Thanks for watching.